Welcome to another episode of An Erotic Evening with Lord Nathaniel Stiffhorn. Here's your host. Oh, dear reader, it seems you've discovered me in a moment of intimacy. Penning a letter to my lady love, my darling betrothed, my Scottish lassie, Lady Gwendolyn Hammond Machelmoor. Alas, we are separated by this damned war between our countries, and can only communicate through these secret missives of desire. Should her father, Lord Robert Brodie Mackenzie Hammond Machelmoor, discover our intimate connection, I fear we two star-crossed lovers would be driven apart forever by our warring families. It is my most fervent desire that one day soon Gwendolyn and I will be reunited and that England and Scotland will be joined together into one nation. Our borders dissolved in a joyous eruption of harmony and mutual understanding that will undoubtedly weather any form of political, social, and global upheaval. Tonight's erotic taste treat Dear reader, hails from the land of red beards, haggis, iron brew, and strong hairy legs rising up into a dark mystery of plaid, and uh, I can't help but think of my darling Gwendolyn. (sighs) Wishing for a Highlander by Jesse Gage is the story of Melanie, an unmarried pregnant museum worker whose wish upon a mysterious artifact magically transports her to 16th century Scotland where she is wedded and bedded by Big Darcy Keith, an eligible Scottish bachelor who is also a virgin, having been shunned by the ladies of his own clan for having an abnormally huge... Darcy. And so, dear reader, we join our story as the lovers are entangled in newly wedded bliss, and as Melanie teaches her Scottish hunk the ways of womanhood. Melanie had never felt more confident in her body than when she'd begun showing her pregnancy. Always a curvy girl, she now felt at home with those curves instead of at odds with them. Her body was doing what it was made for. Carrying a baby made her feel feminine and beautiful, powerful. She felt even more so as she sashayed from the bed to the ewer, knowing Darcy's eyes followed her every move. I'm going to undress you now, she said, giving him a chance to protest if he had any lingering discomfort. Not only did he offer no protest, but he flaunted his trust by lacing his fingers behind his head, showing off his strong triceps. Go on with it, lass. Tis no use hiding from you now. His voice purred from his chest, soft and relaxed. She grinned as she peeled back layers of muted brown wool. Her breath caught when she spread his kilt and he lay completely naked before her. He was all long, strong limbs and hard-working muscle. The sun had burnished his shoulders and arms a rich satiny gold. His torso and stomach were a lighter tan, his natural color, and dusted with a dark blonde and cinnamon-colored hairs that beckoned her fingers to play. A line of darker hairs led from his belly button to the rich tuft of sandy brown between his legs. Curving to the side from the center of that tuft, long and broad, even in his semi-softness, was the most mouth-watering male member she had ever seen, and that included the ones she'd imagined in her fantasies. I'm pleased you're near too disappointed. Disappointed? I'm not disappointed at all. I'm pleased. I have a big, strong, handsome, capable husband. I find you completely stunning, completely desirable. Skepticism tightened the corners of his eyes. I ken you doing a jest, 
But I cannot believe you are truly pleased with my form. How can you be? Ugh. She reached around to guide one of his hands from her back to her bottom and pressed the tips of his fingers to the moist heat between her legs. He inhaled sharply. You're slick as the river weed growing on the rocks in the creek. <laughs> to her delight, he didn't pull his fingers away, but skated them over her in tentative exploration. A woman gets wet when she's full of desire. It's the body's natural preparation for intercourse. How do you want me, lass? Tell me what to do. <laughs> My God. <laughs> oh. You can start by kissing me. Here. She circled a finger around her nipple. Obeying instantly, he pressed a closed mouth kiss to her, as if he were bestowing a reverent peck upon her cheek. No, kiss me like you kiss my mouth. Devour me. Play with me. <sighs> when he pulled at her with gentle sucking, she dug her heels into the bed and her back bowed. A strangled moan tore from her throat. Good grief, she was close to climaxing just from a little nipple action. Focus, Mel. You can't come yet. Make it last. I have a place between my legs that is just as sensitive, but it's very small. Would you like to see it? His breath caught. He nodded, his eyes wide. Just as she'd suspected, her Highlander had had no idea a woman could be stimulated externally. She'd thought Highland men suffered from a chronic lack of romance. But now, she knew it was merely an epidemic of ignorance. No surprise, she hadn't discovered her clitoris until her sophomore year in college. And then she'd only found it after her roommate had joked about double-clicking her own mouse and Melanie had asked her what she'd meant. She'd learned more about sex in a 15-minute conversation with Hillary than she had from her mother and her high school's pathetic excuse for a sex ed program combined. Program? Program. Program. And when she'd explored her own body in her bunk that night, she'd been astounded that a potent little pleasure button had been hiding right under her nose all those years. It had been the Rosetta Stone of personal discoveries. And now she could share that discovery with her husband. She directed Darcy to scoop down the bed so he could inspect her closely and showed him with her fingers where she was most sensitive. Her own touch felt incredible. But when he took over without being asked, her head fell back on the pillow and she cried out. Yes, right there. Oh God, don't stop. She closed her eyes and reached behind her head to grip the pillow. Her hips shifted up and down, mimicking the motion mating. Can you keep doing that and kiss me at the same time? Darcy took direction well. A handful of seconds later, a ragged cry erupted from her throat as waves of frantic bliss crashed over her. He swallowed her scream, moaning himself as she shuddered beside him, panting. She pushed his hands away from her oversensitized nub. So good. That was so good. Christ, lass, he said, his face solemn. I never knew a woman could feel like that. You are a miracle to me. He kissed her, and she melted into him. When he pushed back to gaze lovingly at her, she grasped his straining erection and said, it looks like you're ready for round two.
Well, well, dear reader. I'm sure we can all relate to being absolutely stuffed with a big hot red sausage and asking for seconds. If you have enjoyed these carnal nibblings, please do appreciate our little program with a colloquial gesture of approval. Spread it amongst your friends and family. And above all, submit to us and become a follower of our salacious channel. Good night, dear reader. And remember, have an erotic evening. <laughs>